is Valley News Live at 9 on Fargo CW. We're starting with breaking news tonight. We're getting several reports about a police chase on Highway 10 near Detroit Lakes. We are also now getting word from the Minnesota State Patrol that the eastbound lanes of Highway 10 are shut down between Detroit Lakes and Audubon. The Becker County Sheriff's Department says there is an active scene in the area, and the Minnesota State Patrol says that Becker County is handling the incident. Officials are not releasing the location of the incident, but reports on our Facebook page say the chase ended near the DL Airport around 745. We do have a crew headed to the scene, so stick with Valley News Live throughout the newscast and online for any developments on this story. Drug and alcohol abuse are problems that can find their way into any community, but it's hit the White Earth Reservation especially hard in recent years. Against this rising tide of meth, opioids and liquor is one group hoping to pull people back into their roots and away from their vices. Valley News Team's Clint Rose brings us their story in a community struggle. Addiction is a killer on the rise on the White Earth Reservation, with heroin being its weapon of choice. The number one root of, of a lot of our crime right now is it, it's either drug-related or, or a violent crime and, and property crimes uh, that are stemming from uh, the drug use. Over the last three to four months, the reservation has been seeing a rise in fentanyl-laced heroin, with much more deadly carfentanil also being discovered within the past few weeks. In the middle of all that escalation and heartache, are those caught up in the mess? I lost my children because of meth. I lost my children because I used to sell heroin and meth. I was on heroin. I started heroin when I was 13, 14 years old. Did meth. But none of that really appeased me like the alcohol did. These three women are recovering addicts who are part of that cycle of addiction, sobriety, and then relapse before finally breaking free. They feel like part of the reason so many turn to substance abuse is a lack of identity or a sense of belonging. The cure is a culture and that we all, nobody knows culture anymore. They lost their identity and they're trying to give it back, get it, we're trying to get them back to that. We're trying to pull them back into their culture. They joined the Natives Against Heroin White Earth chapter to help those caught up in substance abuse by linking them to their history. For them, it's not just about saving those that feel trapped in addiction, but also helping the next generation learn more about their culture and give them someone to look up to. I got two little girls that are looking, looking to me you know, how to be an adult and how to deal with things. In Minoman, this is Clint DeRose, Valley News Live. And if you need help, you can reach out to the members of the White Earth chapter anytime, regardless of what type of addiction or ethnic background. The courtroom was packed today with people very much interested in what would happen with one of the two people charged in the Savannah Graywood murder. Brooke Cruz was expected to enter a plea today, but instead decided not to, taking advice from her attorney. For now, her plea is entered as not guilty, and her attorney says she is still not talking to police. Is she cooperating with the investigation? I know police said before that she wasn't. I have no comment on that. She has an absolute right to not make any statements to anybody, and that is her choice at the present time, and that's on my advice. Court documents released today also say William Hain admitted removing garbage bags containing bloody towels and his own bloody shoes from the apartment and then disposing them in a dumpster somewhere in West Fargo. We've added those documents to our website. For that, go to valleynewslive.com. Meanwhile, the Graywin family is now retaining a high-profile women's rights attorney. Attorney Gloria Allred confirmed via email today that she's representing the Graywin family, acting as their victim's advocate and spokesperson. Allred has represented many famous clients, including the family of Nicole Brown Simpson in the O.J. Simpson trial and former Spice Girl Mel B. But first, Justin, it's been a nice night for us in the Valley. It's pretty quiet. What's in store for the rest of the night? And thank you, Christine. Good evening, everybody. It's going to be a cool overnight period, as we will see mainly clear skies. We're seeing clear skies out there right now. The Valenese Live Storm Team Skycam Network shot in Fargo. And the temperatures are on their way down. 53 in Fargo right now. We're at 52 at Detroit Lakes, Fergus Falls, out toward Wadena. Upper 40 showing up on the map out toward Bemidji and Langdon, Devil's Lake, down toward Valley City, closer to that 50-degree mark with the winds from the north. And they've died down a little since earlier in the evening. Wind speed's now between 5 and 15 
15 miles per hour, but the northerly winds are going to keep it cool as we go through the overnight period. Mainly clear skies, just a few more passing clouds. You make your way uh, just off to the east of the viewing area and just off to the south, and we have some rain showers off to the east too, but most of us are going to stay dry in our area. This low pressure system with that cold front making its way out of here, high pressure is working its way in. It's clearing us out, but as it works its way and we have that cool northerly flow that is going to uh, dominate our weather as we go through the evening. Here's your uh, hour by hour forecast through tonight. Temperatures falling into the upper 30s to lower 40s around the area as we keep the clear skies and the northerly wind and sunny skies for the day tomorrow. Temperatures on the way up as the wind flips to more of a southerly or uh, southeasterly direction. Temperatures into the upper 50s to mid 60s as we stay dry and mainly clear as we go through your Friday evening. Here's what it looks like in Fargo. Uh, we got mainly clear skies. Temperatures getting into the mid 60s, upper 50s into Lays Country out toward Wadena for your high tomorrow near 60. Valley City, Jamestown and 57 out toward Devil's Lake. And uh, as you make your way into the Southern Valley, we'll be into the lower 60s as we go through your Friday. Then for the day on Saturday, most of us staying dry during the daytime hours. An increase in the clouds turning mostly cloudy, but later on to the evening, we got a southerly flow that will warm us up. Fargo area near 70, everybody else mid to upper 60s. And there is a slight chance of some showers, especially as you make your way through later on into the evening. And more rain on the way for Sunday. It will stay windy as we go through the weekend and start next week. Temperatures mainly into the mid to upper 60s. Tuesday is our dry day. We got partly cloudy skies, a high of 64, 69, a warm day on Wednesday. A chance of some showers mainly in the south as another system makes its way through as we go through the day on Thursday. And Thursday is cooler, a high of 61 degrees. So Friday morning, it's looking like a nice start to our week with sunshine. That'll be nice. You know, it'll be very cold tomorrow, but yeah, it will warm up with the sunshine for Friday. All right. Thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. A Grand Forks man is in jail after police say he tried to rob a convenience store there earlier today. Police say it happened just before 4 o'clock this afternoon at the Cynics on Gateway Drive. They caught up with 22-year-old Robert Smith Jr. just a few blocks away. He was then arrested on an attempted robbery charge and is now being held in the Grand Forks County Correctional Center. A former assistant middle school principal from Bemidji is pleading guilty to federal child sex charges. Brandon Bierkness appeared in federal court in St. Paul today. He was arrested in March for soliciting a child to engage in sexual contact. The Beltrami County Sheriff says their investigation determined that Bierkness, who worked at Bemidji Middle School, was contacting juvenile children through Facebook, Snapchat, and email accounts he had set up with a false identity. A sentencing date has not been set. He remains in federal custody. The company that built the Dakota Access Pipeline is giving North Dakota $15 million to help cover the cost of policing extensive protests of the pipeline. Today, a spokesperson for Governor Doug Burgum said that the Texas-based Energy Transfer Partners has wired the money. North Dakota already had borrowed $43 million to cover law enforcement costs for the protests, which lasted months. The state this week also got a $10 million grant from the U.S. Department of Justice to help pay some of the policing bills. Dueling messages coming from the man who claims he was sexually abused by a priest in the Crookston Diocese who allegedly covered it up. Ron Vasek says he was molested in the 70s by a priest and then years later, Bishop Michael Hepner coerced him to cover it up. The church settled a lawsuit brought against them and yesterday released the terms of that settlement. It says they agreed there was no unlawful action taken. However, there's no mention of the latter letter Vasek says he was forced to sign. Vasek released the letter he says proves he was forced to cover up sexual abuse. If you want to see both statements, go to our website on valleynewslive.com and just click on the story. The Trump administration is pushing back against critics of the federal response to the damage inflicted on Puerto Rico by Hurricane Maria. It's been more than a week since the storm hit and critical supplies still aren't getting through. CBS's Weijia Jiang is at the White House. U.S. Marines are clearing debris off blocked roads in Puerto Rico. 
They're trying to make their way to a down cell phone tower. You see us getting to critical infrastructure such as FAA towers. As soon as we can get those up, more life-saving aid can come in. Aid is arriving on the island. Thousands of shipping containers filled with supplies are in the port of San Juan, but officials say there aren't enough truck drivers to deliver them. We had provided as many commodities as were necessary to the island. The challenge became then land-based distribution. That remains the challenge. Uh, that remains the priority today. President Trump temporarily lifted the Jones Act for Puerto Rico, allowing more non-U.S. ships to deliver supplies to the island. The White House insists it's doing all that it can. You are seeing devastation in Puerto Rico. That is the fault of the hurricane. The relief effort is under control. Some Puerto Ricans say help isn't coming fast enough. We are, we are American citizens. We're not better than anyone. But we're not worse than anyone. The USNS Comfort is shipping out Friday, and the Pentagon has dispatched three-star General Jeffrey Buchanan to take charge of the relief effort. He'll oversee the roughly 10,000 federal workers already on the island. Weijia Jiang, CBS News, the White House. President Trump tweeted tonight saying FEMA and first responders are doing a great job. Students say campus restructuring at UND has left less resources for women, and especially vulnerable women. UND used to have a house that was dedicated as the Women's Center. It was a place where they tackled issues from gender equality to a safe place for victims of sexual violence. The university leveled the house and moved the center into a room in the student unit. Some students who used to work at the house say that it isn't serving women on campus. I believe that all of our diversity and inclusion centers on campus are not adequately understood. How they're making an impact administration doesn't quite understand what centers are supposed to be doing. For more on how the change affects women on campus, go over to our website, bellynewslive.com.